Welcome to the intricate world of nephron dynamics with Easy Physiology and Research Pro. Every ion, every molecule, every drop of water is tightly regulated through transport mechanisms, driven by electrochemical gradients and cellular machinery. This isn't just kidney physiology, this is the silent symphony of survival. Every minute, as we have discussed in our GFR video, nearly 125 milliliters of plasma is filtered by the kidneys, but not everything is meant to be lost. Through the precise mechanisms of tubular reabsorption, essential substances like sodium, water, glucose, and amino acids are rescued and returned to the blood. Simultaneously, tubular secretion operates like a molecular waste disposal system, selectively ejecting unwanted ions, drugs, and metabolic toxins into the filtrate. These two processes, though opposite in direction, work in seamless harmony to maintain fluid volume, electrolyte balance, and acid-base homeostasis. Transport occurs through both active, ATP-dependent pumps and passive diffusion, varying by segment and substance. This is not just filtration and excretion, this is the nephron's precise dance of conservation and clearance, keeping the internal environment exquisitely stable. Zoom into the nephron, the elite functional unit of the kidney. The proximal tubule is the workhorse, handling bulk reabsorption. The loop of Henley fine-tunes water and salt via countercurrent magic. The distal convoluted tubule adds finesse, adjusting calcium and magnesium. And the collecting duct? That's the command center, responsive to hormonal whispers like ADH and aldosterone. Each segment is a specialist, sculpting urine from plasma with molecular precision. Sodium is king, and its reabsorption drives the entire nephron economy. 65% is reclaimed right at the PCT. 25% climbs back in the thick ascending limb. 5% is scooped up in the DCT. And the final 3%, that's regulated by hormonal royalty in the collecting duct. The sodium-potassium ATP ACE pump on the basolateral membrane is the unsung hero, establishing a gradient that powers co-transport of nearly everything else. Sodium is not just an ion, it's the nephron's currency. When blood volume dips or pressure crashes, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system leaps into action. Angiotensin II kickstarts sodium reabsorption in the PCT. Aldosterone recruits ENAC channels in the collecting duct. Meanwhile, ANP, secreted by stretched atria, says, enough, and halts sodium hoarding. It's a hormonal tug of war balancing sodium retention and excretion, with your blood pressure hanging in the balance. Where sodium goes, chloride follows, loyally restoring electroneutrality. In the PCT, chloride slips in passively. In the thick ascending limb, NKCC2CO transporters actively bring in sodium, potassium, and chloride together. The DCT uses NCCCO transporters, the very targets of thiazide diuretics. Chloride may seem like sodium's shadow, but its role in acid-base balance and osmolarity is anything but secondary. Water reabsorption is no passive affair. In the PCT and descending loop, aquaporin-1 channels enable osmotic water flow. But in the collecting duct, ADH rules. It recruits aquaporin-2 channels when the body cries for hydration. The countercurrent multiplier in the loop of Henle creates the medullary hypertonicity, setting the stage for water reabsorption. Hydration is a hormonal a choreographed masterpiece. Please check our video on countercurrent mechanism for the detailed description on it. Glucose is precious fuel, and the kidney makes sure it isn't wasted. In the PCT, SGLT2 and SGLT1 co-transporters absorb it alongside sodium. Basolateral GLOOT2 and GLOOT1 send it into the blood. But when plasma glucose crosses 180 to 200 mg per deciliter, reabsorption maxes out, leading to glucosuria, the hallmark of diabetes. This threshold isn't just a number, 
it's the kidney drawing a biochemical line in the sand. Visualize this. A linear rise in filtered glucose, a flat line in reabsorbed glucose beyond TMG, and a steep curve of glucose loss in urine. It's a graph every diabetic patient lives by. SGLT2 inhibitors like dapagliflozin exploit this physiology, therapeutically inducing glucosuria to control blood sugar. It's a brilliant case of clinical pharmacology meeting nephron wisdom. Nearly all filtered amino acids are reclaimed in the PCT via sodium-coupled transporters. From neutral to dibasic, the nephron knows them all. Genetic glitches here manifest as cystinuria or heartnup disease, leading to kidney stones or pellagra-like symptoms. The kidney isn't just preserving nutrients, it's defending the protein economy of the body. Magnesium, essential for over 300 enzymes, is reclaimed stealthily. Paracellular reabsorption in the thick ascending limb dominates, while TRPM6 channels in the DCT fine-tune it. PTH and plasma magnesium levels act as regulators. This trace element doesn't make headlines, but its deficiency can derail everything from ATP metabolism to neuromuscular function. Calcium has a hierarchy. Passive paracellular absorption dominates the PCT and thick ascending limb, but active TRPV5-mediated uptake in the DCT is PTH's playground. Calbindin ferries calcium intracellularly, while exchangers and ATP as it's ejected basolaterally. Vitamin D enhances this machinery. Bone health, nerve function, and cardiac rhythm, all hinge on this tightly controlled ballet. Phosphate rides the coattails of sodium in the PCT via NAPI CO transporters. But PTH shows no mercy, down-regulating these channels to dump phosphate into urine. Why? To prevent calcium phosphate precipitation in tissues. FGF23 also cuts in, dialing down reabsorption. It's a metabolic chess game, with bone health, buffering, and ATP supply at stake. Potassium is both reabsorbed and secreted, a dual fate. Most is reclaimed passively in the PCT and tall. But secretion steals the show in the DCT and collecting duct, via ROMK and BK channels. Aldosterone calls the shots here, orchestrating excretion. High intake, flow rate, and alkalosis enhance it. Acidosis and potassium sparing diuretics inhibit it. It's a tightrope walk one misstep, and arrhythmias ensue. Here it is, the nephron decoded into a matrix. Segment-wise transport, hormone-wise regulation. From sodium to calcium, from PCT to collecting duct, this table isn't just a summary, it's the key to renal physiology mastery. Waste management in action, from hydrogen ions for acid-base balance to potassium and ammonia for nitrogen disposal. Organic acids and drugs are actively secreted by organic anion and cation transporters in the PCT. These are the secret doors through which the kidney excretes what the body must never reabsorb. Let's decode one of the most clinically relevant signs in renal physiology, glucosuria. Under normal conditions, every bit of glucose filtered by the glomerulus is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule by sglt2 and sglt1 transporters but here's the catch once plasma glucose rises above 180 to 200 milligrams per deciliter the transporters hit their transport maximum tmg beyond this point the nephron just can't keep up and glucose starts spilling into the urine this is classic osmotic overflow, and it's the hallmark of diabetes mellitus. Now here's where physiology meets pharmacology. Enter the SGLT2 inhibitors, drugs like dapagliflozin, impagliflozin, and canagliflozin. They deliberately block glucose reabsorption in the proximal tubule, lowering blood glucose levels by promoting therapeutic glucosuria. But that's not all. They also reduce cardiovascular risk, preserve renal function, and cut down heart failure hospitalizations. Truly a win-win from tubule to heart.
There's even more, in a rare condition called renal glycosuria. Glucosuria occurs without diabetes, due to inherited defects in the SGLT2 gene. No hyperglycemia. Just a physiological leak that reveals the importance of these transporters. Bottom line? Glucosuria isn't just a lab value. It's a window into both disease mechanisms and cutting-edge therapy. Too little potassium, muscle paralysis and deadly arrhythmias. Too much, same outcome, different cause. Diuretics, renal failure, endocrine disorders, they all affect potassium handling. Know the transport, know the risk, know the fix. Meet the genetic mimics of diuretic therapy. Barter syndrome knocks out NKCC2 and CLCKB. Gittleman syndrome targets the NCC cotransporter. The result? Salt loss, alkalosis, low potassium, a molecular mess that mirrors chronic loop or thiazide diuretic use. Let's put your renal knowledge to the test with some rapid-fire high-yield questions. And yes, we're giving you the answers too. Ready? Which nephron segment reabsorbs the largest percentage of filtered sodium? Checkmark correct answer. Proximal convoluted tubule, PCT, reclaiming about 65% of filtered sodium. Which hormone regulates water permeability in the collecting duct? Checkmark correct answer. Antidiuretic hormone, ADH, by inserting aquaporin 2 channels in response to plasma osmolality. Which transporter is responsible for most glucose reabsorption in the kidney? Checkmark correct answer. SGLT2. Located in the early proximal tubule and handling about 90% of glucose reabsorption. Which cells are primarily responsible for potassium secretion in the nephron? Checkmark correct answer. Principal cells, in the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct, under the influence of aldosterone. Whether you're preparing for NEAT PG, INICET, or USMLE, these are the high-yield facts you must know cold. Now rewind and quiz again. Repetition seals retention. Tubular transport is life's balancing act. It keeps our fluids, electrolytes, and pH in check, quietly and relentlessly. Hormones fine-tune, segments specialize, and clinical syndromes reveal the genius of this architecture. Understanding this isn't optional, it's essential for every future physician, physiologist, and pharmacologist. And do not forget to subscribe to Easy Physiology and Research Pro.